When installing the camshaft, you've got a number of different options when it comes to the retaining plate. Now the retaining plate is critical because it helps to control the thrust or the end play of the camshaft. And there's a lot of play as I move this in and out right now. Um, that's because the thrust is measured when the cam gear is installed and torqued. You've got to install it and torque it before you can measure the end play in order to get your measurement correct. Now there are a number of different options when it comes to this retaining plate. Um, first and foremost, it depends on what year uh, engine you're using or what you're dealing with. Uh, this particular 289 uh, has a little extension piece on the cover here so you can see a retaining fastener here and here and uh, instead of just being circular it has a little tab that sticks out here. Um, some of the really early uh, small block Fords did not have this tab here. It was just simply an oval with two fasteners. So uh, figure out which is appropriate for your uh, particular block uh, and it depends on whether or not there's an oil passage here. So um, in, in some of the early blocks, this casting extension is here, but the, there's no open oil passage there. So in that case, you could run this type of retainer on, on this type of block. But if there is an oil passage, uh, you need to use this type of retainer because there's a little groove on the back side that helps uh, carry a little oil um, through here. And so you've got to make sure that you've got the correct retainer for the block that you're using. Um, you do have options if you're interested in reducing friction. Uh, so this is a uh, roller thrust bearing. It has on the cam gear side a replaceable um, bushing so that as this wears you could remove and replace it. On the back side, uh, here's that. Uh, oil groove I was talking about. Uh, on the back side in this particular model is a Torrington bearing. And so uh, this helps reduce friction where the camshaft rides against the back side of the re retainer. Um, so I'm not using the Torrington bearing type on this particular engine because my comp cams uh, 7138 billet uh, timing set has a Torrington bearing on the back side of the cam gear. It comes installed uh, when you get the kit. It's already there. Uh, now this is uh, important to note because um, most of these cam retainer plates, especially on any stock engine and most of the aftermarket ones as well, it's just a solid piece of steel with uh, traditional fastener holes and they're held in place with a standard hex head bolt. Now it's a, it's a shallow head bolt so that um, when it's installed it doesn't protrude very far and so when the cam gear is installed it's not likely to contact it. Uh, however, because this Torrington bearing is here on this particular timing set the head of these retainer bolts uh, does come in contact with this Torrington bearing. And so if you're going to use this type of timing set, Comp Cams tells you to either uh, take your existing retainer and bevel the holes or purchase an aftermarket retainer that already has beveled holes. So I purchased this one, it, it's already beveled. The fasteners come with the timing set in this case. So all I had to do was pick up the retainer plate with the beveled uh, fastener holes and install and it clears the Torrington bearing uh, very nicely. The other thing you need to be cognizant of is Again, depending on the year of the engine you're dealing with, if you're going to run a mechanical fuel pump, you'll need an eccentric like this that mounts to the cam gear and rotates with it. Um, and as it rotates off center, it comes in contact with the tang of the fuel pump, which will sit on this side of the engine, and the, the tang will, will come through the timing cover uh, and in front of the timing set and come in contact with the eccentric here. 
There are two different types that Ford uses. One is a solid piece and the other is a two-piece. Now these both get retained the same way. The, the bolt that holds the cam gear onto the camshaft goes through and then uh, the bolt goes through and when you torque the cam gear to the camshaft that torque alone is enough to mate this with the cam uh, gear so that as the cam gear rotates this is able to actuate the pump. Um, the difference is in the two-piece type there's a second hole. So the one-piece type, the solid type, all it has is the single fastener hole. On the two-piece type there's a second hole, it's a square hole here. And uh, on these uh, there will be either uh, a tab that comes off of the um, end of the pin on the crankshaft that comes through this hole uh, and engages with the eccentric or there will be a tab on the cam gear itself that engages with this hole so that it's mechanically attached to the cam gear and rotates with it. So those are the two different types. They both work just fine. Um, just make sure that for your application, you've determined which uh, fuel pump eccentric is appropriate for your particular operation, and it uh, should be fine. I've got my cam gear installed now. The fuel pump eccentric is in place and the fastener is torqued to specifications. It's 40 to 45 foot-pounds. I've torqued it to 42. And so now that it's installed and torqued properly, um, I've got a dial indicator mounted here and it's just sitting against a flat surface on the face of the gear. It really doesn't matter where on the gear you put it as long as it's a flat surface and you're consistent as you take your measurement. So if I push in you can see that the dial indicator is zeroed and as I pull out you can see that we've got about three thousandths of an inch. Uh, that is the total end play or thrust. How far in and out of the engine the camshaft can move as it rotates. Uh, so again, as I push in, zero. I, I pushed it in and zeroed the dial indicator uh, when I set it up. And now when I pull it in the opposite direction, I can see the total movement, which is three thousandths. The tolerance is one to seven thousandths with uh, two to four thousandths being the target. So at three thousandths, I'm right in the middle of that range. If it weren't in this range, you'd have to work with your uh, retainer plate in order to help um, adjust the, the depth uh, of the, the camshaft and the, and the gear arrangement so you can control that that end play. If it's too much, you've got to tighten it up. And if it's too little, you've got to expand it. Um, and so this is a critical measurement to take. It affects a lot of things uh, in, in operation. Um, in particular, uh, the most obvious is the mesh between the camshaft gear and the distributor gear. Uh, and so it's a critical measurement to take, but it's not that difficult at all to actually take the measurement. Um, most of the time, if you put it together with stock components, uh, then uh, it will automatically come out within tolerance. They're very reliable in that regard. So it's kind of unusual to put one together and find that it's way, way out. It does happen sometimes, uh, but uh, for the most part, um, you'll, you'll find when you put it together, uh, you're checking it just as a matter of course, uh, just to check it. And hopefully, all things uh, as they should be, it'll come out uh, within tolerance.